you don't have the budget to do it with someone else and you have to do it yourself, um, then this is what I would recommend. It's the best possible solution for you. It's going to be the best. So first things first, like this is what I, I'll tell you what I would do if I were you, and then you can kind of do whatever makes sense for you. Okay. For sure. So this is what I would do. So this is like, first thing you got to do is find the databases. So that's everything you're seeing here on the left side. You see all those links? Yeah. Okay. U.S. Realtor databases. Then there's like different databases for different niches, right? So you can right. see how many there are like for any particular niche at any given moment. There's a lot. Um, and you should be, and I didn't actually find any of these. I had one of my teammates go and find these for me okay. um so you can uh you know you can like look at brokerages on um you know for this specifically if you're looking, targeting real estate or mortgages you can just look at linkedin as an example and see the company size on linkedin for their brokerage if they have a lot of company size um, then it's typically a larger brokerage you can just find their company website online um, and just filter on linkedin but like mortgage brokerages by like company headcount size. You see what I mean? And yeah. then it'll give you, it'll just literally tell you which databases to go and scrape. Like it'll tell you, okay, this company's name is Ellis, whatever mortgages. Um, they have 2000 employees on LinkedIn. Okay. So what does that say? Okay, great. That says if I go to ellismortgages.com or whatever their website is, they're going to have, you know, 2000 agents on their website. Right. So that's one way to go about it, using other tools to filter company headcounts to figure out if the databases make sense to scrape. Um, that's this is all the research component to this. I'm telling you all about the research side of it, right? Right. Um, there's the research side, but then there's also the like facilitation side, like you actually like collecting the data, right? And so let's just say I found a brokerage. I'm gonna use um, I'll just click on this one click on a random one, right? I found a database, you know, whatever this database is for. Let's just say I'm searching for the province of Ontario. Okay, 1300 agents in Ontario. Okay. So there's actually and we're going to try this with a couple of these databases, we're gonna open up another one. Um, there is a, a tool that you can use. And let's chat about that today, because it's uh, so. Scraper. You should get this extension. It's called Instant Data Scraper. It's a Google Chrome extension. Um, I already have it in my Chrome uh, instance, but once you add it, it's like this little Pokeball that you oh, okay. see here. Okay. And you basically come to any page. Let's just say this page here. Um, and you literally click on the Pokeball and it gets you all the details. You see that? Whoa. So this one, it only gets you what it'll, it'll only scrape what's on the page. Okay. Right. Right. So what is that? What that means is if there's no emails, if there's no phone numbers on the page, it's just going to scrape whatever the front end available data is. Okay. Right. Right. Um, now most databases have a button. See that button there for the right arrow. Yep. Okay. If they have a next button instead of a right arrow, you can go like this, locate next button. Um, and you would be able to just let the tool, see how it's green here and it's changing, it's green. You see all the green? Yeah. That's me telling the tool, okay, which button is the next button. So see how I just made that green for the tool? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so that now the tool knows that that is the next button. So when I click on this, you see this? It went from locate next button to start crawling. You see that there? Yeah. Okay. Now, with that being said, um, you like start crawling. Um, you would do, I don't want to crawl all the date details on the next pages and whatnot. Cause I don't have the emails. You see that? Yeah. Um, but you'd be able to, let's just say, let's just say here, I'll just kind of start crawling for you right now. I'll show you what's possible. So it's just going to keep going. So you see how it's going to page five, right? Page six, page seven, page yeah. eight. You see that automatically page nine, Page 10, it's going, page 11, page 12. It's just scraping it. And look how many contacts. You see that? Page oh. is scraped 14, rows collected 300, working time 19 seconds. You see that? So all the oh. shit that you're doing, 
you're literally you can automate it just like i'm showing yeah. you here so your right. data miner is out of a job now here's the thing here's the thing this tool is not perfect okay so i'm going to exit okay. this um this tool is not perfect and i'll tell you uh why um so it's it's not perfect because like let's just say i did want all of this into a csv right so let's just say i downloaded this current um stuff that i sort of scraped into yeah. a csv so that's what this looks like here i have my csv so so far this was like what i downloaded right it's right. still scraping all the other shit until it maximizes all the pages it's on page 50 right now um it's scraping as much as it can um and it will fill this whole table once the scrape is done um so but what you need to understand is that in situations like this where there's no email or or contact details having a data miner is great because they can still scrape this information and then right. just like find the person's contact details and then attach it to the spreadsheet you see what i mean yeah for so sure. like they could they'd be able to download let's just say as an example they'd be able to download let's just say up until they would be able to get the first name the last name via the tool and then they'll be able to get the url the location and the website right or whatever right via the tool yeah. So they have half the data and the only thing they need is the mobile number and the email. So they can find that online. You see how my data miner sometimes will have, will put a, um, if you can't find the email, he'll put just like a dash. Do you see that? Right. Yeah. So, and that's because he's literally using tools like this, like the Pokeball to acquire data. And then once we have the data, like he's then optimizing and making sure it's organized and legit and he's verifying the contact details. Right. And right. then building it one by one. So it's not like he's inputting all, like he's not starting from scratch, you know? He's starting from like, he just has to find the contact details. So, and, and that would be in this case, right? right? But if I were to exit this and let's just say go to another browser, what are we seeing here that's different than the last one? We see the phone number on this one. You see that? Yeah. See how it's available on the front end of the website, the phone number? You can just like, you don't need to click on anything or whatever. So if you find a database like this, then you're, then you're in really good hands so i'll just click the pokeball and you see here off the first click i already have the phone number you see that yeah yeah okay and uh what i could do so this one doesn't look like it has hold on let's see the structure of this database yes it does have a next page do you see that yeah so i'll click on the pokeball again and i'll say okay locate next button and then i gotta let them know where the next button is just like that click on the pokeball again and then you can click start crawling. So for example, if I just click start crawling, it's Shit. literally just going to start stacking all of the data and it's going to start to collect it for me. And it's rows collected 63, rows collected 84. It's keep it's going to keep updating. It's just That's keep so fast too. That's yeah, crazy. Really yeah. So there's really no need actually for a data miner. Like you actually don't need one anymore if you're not cleaning data. Like the only reason I have my data miner is to clean data. Right. Um, but in terms of like collecting rows and, and uploading them, like you see, I can do this in five seconds. Like I don't need to pay anyone, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, I could do it from 11.23 a.m. to 11.25 a.m. Just be on this task for two minutes. Um, right. and have like a thousand leads ready to go you know thousand 1, fifteen hundred leads um yeah that's so, insane. so the real task is finding databases ultimately that are within your niche um because if you find the right database it makes the whole thing very easy like um, i don't need to verify anyone contact details or find any contact details online i don't need to do anything the only thing i need to do is just run this tool let it let it scrape um and then essentially um let's just say after I have all of that. Um, like, let's just say I can, I don't want to download a CSV. Let's just say I copy all of it. Yeah. Um, Cause I'm building a separate um, lead list over here as an example. So if I wanted to copy all of it, I can uh, add it to an existing CSV or Excel file. Just go down in your list. Um, and then let's go control V. Okay. And you see all the data pasted. Yeah. Okay, and then I have I would have to clean that data, obviously. None of that's matching the the columns and whatnot. But right. yeah, like I just pulled in. Look how many, look how much data I just pulled in from thirty seven hundred to 
3,300. So that's what about 400 contacts in the span of 30 huh. seconds, right? All direct yeah. numbers and everything. So yeah. I'm going to delete this just because um, probably have it all scraped already. Right. Um, so, but the point is, is that like, once you have that list done, um, you have a couple options. The first option is let me go ahead and download the CSV. You can copy all the contacts and then paste right. them into a spreadsheet like I showed you, or just download the CSV. Um, once you download the CSV or copy it into your list, let's just say you're doing the list option, then you just go file, you just go download, and then you just go CSV from here. Um, and then you'd basically just go into your close IO instance or into whatever instance, um, click import leads, upload CSV, paste your newly downloaded CSV, and then map the fields. And this is for any CRM. This is for go high level. This is for close. This is for HubSpot. You're gonna have to do this for any upload. Yeah. Um, you know, first name matched with first name, right? Last name matched with last name, mobile number matched with direct phone, right? Um, email with email, company website with company. Uh, we can just say URL um, and then address with address. And then website, we'll just put, let's say URL. Okay, next. Then what you want to do is group related rows. That should be off. And then check if lead already exists by the email. Okay, start importing. Simple. Now your leads are importing. Um, and then now you can start cold calling them or now you can have your SDRs reaching out to them. Um, but yeah, so pretty much while that's working, like, and that's uploading in your CRM, technically you can actually go to another database while that's loading, because that'll take about five minutes. And let's just say, click on the next database and then we'll scrape even more with the Pokeball and just keep right. spend like 10 minutes doing this, 20 minutes doing this. Um, and you should be able to, you know, build a pretty massive list. Like, let's just say, even if you spent one day doing this, like an entire day, you just said, okay, today, all I'm doing, I'm not doing anything but da scraping data, right? Like, that's all I wanted to do today. Yeah. Um, and you imagine how much data you can get in the span of an eight hour day. Like, yeah. you could probably fill up your entire CRM with like 50,000 leads, probably more, even 40, 50,000 leads, roughly. Oh yeah, um, especially with the speed that thing was scraping, that was insane. Yeah, man. So like, there's a lot of hacks um, out there that exist. Uh, there's there's ways around everything. Just remember that. So if you're struggling with anything, just know that there's a solution. And, and if there isn't a solution for what you're struggling with, that's a good indicator that you should create a business to solve that solution. And that's if if there's nothing available online to solve that, then great. Like, for example, data miners were a thing, databases were a thing, but data, a reliable data scraping tool was not available. Right. So someone created this and they're like, like, let me just build a tool that just does what I need it to do. You know what I mean? For sure. Um, in which case, you know, that's capitalism, entrepreneurship. It's, it's how it all works. But yeah, long story short, that's that that should be the only thing you do going forward. Like you don't need D7 Lead Finder. You don't need any of these other tools. All you need is database links yeah. and Pokeball. Um, use both and uh, you'll have an unlimited supply of leads and you'll never be dry on leads, okay? Awesome. Yeah, I'm going to go for that. Thank you. No problem, my man.